Hey, Algebra 2, I'm introducing you to the newest member of the Donahue family. This is Mookie Donahue, and she is, just came to live with us today. So um, she's a little nervous about becoming a math teacher already, so I'm going to hand her off to Griff, and I'm going to take over from here. Thank you, Griffy. And we are going to learn math. So hanging out with Mookie would be more fun. However, that is not my job <laughs> to let you hang out with my puppy. So... Um, we're going to talk about section 9.5, Solving Rational Equations today. And I did hear you guys about wanting these typed out, and I will try to get that for next chapter. I'm still just trying to get my feet wet with everything with this one. So this actually is going to be our last section we're going to do out of chapter 9. And we'll review for a few days, and then we will try to test online. So we'll kind of figure that out as it goes. So we're going to learn two different types of problems today, and we'll probably do another example of type 2, because that's a little bit trickier. So first of all, type 1. Um, hopefully you notice this is just a fraction equaling a fraction. So basically two fractions are equal. So that's our first type. You're going to like these kind because you've known how to solve these back from geometry or from algebra. This is solving by proportions. So we're just going to cross multiply. However, before we do that, we have to talk about something involving fractions. And one of the things when we're solving fractions and there's a variable in the denominator like this one, this, um, if you recall, you can't divide by zero. So since we can't divide by zero, we have to make sure this denominator is not zero. So what we're going to do is we're going to figure out what values this can't be. So um, denominator cannot equal zero. So what I'm going to do is off to the side here, I'm going to basically figure out what would make this equal zero. And some of you guys are like, that's obvious. And others of you are not quite understanding yet. So I'm going to set this equal to zero. So if x was zero plus one, if x was one, this denominator would equal zero. One minus one would be zero. That wouldn't be okay because we can't divide by zero. So this is an answer that does not work. Now you might say, why do we care about that? We don't even know if it's possible that it does work. Well, we have to make sure we exclude answers that don't make sense for a fraction. Now 12 can't equal zero. So that one we don't really have to worry about. So this one is the, t the one that doesn't work. So we kind of like make sure we know that and the, the book might ask you to figure that out. So that one does not work. So if that answer comes out, we'll throw it out right away. But what we're going to do is we're going to cross multiply here. So I'm going to multiply these two together, which is more work than we probably want to do, but this will be okay. Multiplying those two and then 4 times 12. So we'll do first outer, inner, last here, foil. But the good news is they're conjugates. So these two will cancel. And then this will be 48. So I'm ready to solve. And I go to take the square root. Don't forget though, when we put the square root in, there's always two answers, positive and negative. Square root of 49 is positive and negative seven. So these are the answers that work. Back up here, remember x equals one does not work. Well, x equals one doesn't come up as a solution, so we don't really need this, but these are our two answers that would work for this problem. So if you put those in, they would equal the same as what you would get down here. So four over seven minus one, and then seven plus one over 12 would equal the same thing. And same thing with negative seven. So um, we can solve using cross multiply if you have two fractions that are equal. So when those questions come out, you'll be glad to see those. Um, and hopefully they make sense to you and you do well with them. It might require some factoring or solving by square roots. Now, the next type of problem you'll see here is type two. This is not a fraction equals a fraction. So this is two fractions are being added together and they equal something else. So I can't do cross multiply here because I have this addition and I don't have common denominators. So there's kind of a lot going on here. And so we have a little bit more work to do in this case. First of all, I have to figure out what doesn't work for X. So remember the denominator can't equal zero. 
So if you look, this one and this one don't equal zero. But if x was zero, that wouldn't be good. So x equals zero does not work. Because that would make this denominator equal zero. However, we don't know what the answers are yet, so we're going to figure that out now. So this is type two, so we can't cross multiply. So we need to learn another method. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to figure out what the common denominator is, and then we're going to use that to get rid of all these fractions. So we're going to find the common denominator. So between x, 4, and 2, our common denominator, 4 is the biggest number. 2 can become 4, and x could get a 4. So our common denominator in this case is 4x. So what we're going to do to this fraction is I'm going to rewrite it again. A little bit of space here. And I'm going to multiply all the fractions by this common denominator. So I'm going to multiply here, here, and here. Everything's getting multiplied by 4x. Because if I multiply one side of the equation by 4x, I have to multiply the other. Now why this is good. So we chose to multiply. You're going to multiply all the tops by the common denominator. So I'm multiplying all these by 4x. So these x's will cancel. So I get 4 times 12 is 48. So we see what happened there. That went away. There's no more fraction here. This one plus these 4's will cancel. So I'll end up with 3x equals. So again, the fraction's gone. This one, the 4 over 2 can become 2 over 1 or just 2x. So this is 3 times 2x, which is 6x. So take a minute to see what I did there. I got rid of all these fractions by multiplying by this common denominator. So this cancel, that cancel, so I can do some cross canceling here. And now this becomes a pretty simple equation for me to solve. So I'm gonna move this three X over. Six X minus three X is three X. And you can divide by three. And I find out X is 16. Now, is that one of my excluded answers? No, X equals zero didn't work, but this works just fine. So um, we were able to get rid of the fractions by using this common denominator. Now, we didn't have to do that up here. We just cross multiplied and they were no longer fractions. So let me show you guys another example of this to make sure it's making sense to you. So I'm going to pause the video and then um, start on a new example with you.